Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO Ninjago set review from Brick by Brick. Today we have the Temple of Erjutsu, set number 70751, and 2,028 pieces, and set number uh, right there. It has this big instruction booklet, nice binding, but um, Normally I don't talk too much about the instructions, but I figured these deserve a special mention because in the beginning they do have some nice introductory material included along with some, you know, concept sketches, um, interview, some character images. Uh, you can probably find this, uh, or you can find this on the website. And it has a thing about the Shadow Theater as well, so that is interesting but let's get on to the actual model all right the first thing to take note of is the layout of the entire thing you can see we have three buildings first um, this blue blacksmith shop the big temple itself and then this little marketplace over here but we're gonna start off with this little bridge which is used to connect the whole thing. You can see I just have two figures on there. But it is symmetrical on both sides and it just uses these flex tube pieces to make a little archway. Uh, pretty simple but effective I think. Makes a nice bridge and you got these nice stone dragons on the edges. So that's that. And it's not attached, you just put it in between these two gray plates. Whoops. These two gray plates. And that's how it sits there and it connects the whole thing in the front. While we're on small side builds, you also, at the very end, build this little um, fireworks uh, shooter. And it's just a stud shooter, and all you do is turn that around, and there go studs, they go shooting off like fireworks. And you do get an extra set, so that's helpful. So the first of the three buildings that you assemble is this marketplace. And, um, you know, it's run by uh, Jesper or Jesper, or however you pronounce it, and the call also comes in the bag. But, we'll get those guys out of the way, and you can see in the front, it does have a little bit of water um, where the bridge would connect onto here, and you got two fishing poles here, one of them has a crab on the end, nice piece to get. Um, they don't come with string for the fishing rods, but that's alright, I suppose. A little bit of stonework in the front, I like these two little statues, but um, you can see that there are signs for what the market might be selling. We got fish on this side, and on the other side we have got bread, water, eggs, all sorts of foodstuffs. And um, that, this loaf of bread should not be sticking out weird. It should be in there just like all the others. All right, but um, on the front it also has this nice detailing with the gold. Um, with the little 2i2 round plate and these elven swords. Got some lamps. On the side there are some chickens, obviously for the eggs that are in the picture. These connected to the temple. Uh, I guess we got Dareth just chilling inside. But um, inside the actual shop, you can see here in this thing there are two trading cards, which are exclusive stickers to the set. I like the Sensei one because it's on a metallic gold tile. This one I think is supposed to be coal, but it might be someone else, um, just because they did. I know there's two that are black ninja, one of them is coal and one of them is Jay, I think, just because of the way they printed it. But um, the other little bag here has the printed cookies, two of them. In here we have an orange and silver fish, and I actually really like this build here. It's like a little water fountain bubbler thing. They use a miner's hat. and. Back around to the front, you can see this has three loaves of bread, and the other one has three apples. In each one, they seem to have two of the rarer color of uh, food, but I like the little details that are in there. But the roof of this building makes it look really cool. It uses garage doors, so they kind of move around, but they let them slope at this nice shape, which looks really nifty. And even cooler, up in the back, they actually use that as a little feature, because inside, you've got a chest, this one has shurikens, and the other chest, which um, you can see both the chests right there, you can't pull them out this way so you have to pull them out through the roof, and this one inside has two golden knives and a pirate cutlass piece. But um, 
further than that, just like the overall design of this building is pretty cool. I like the details on the floor. It uses jumper plates so that you can actually stand minifigs in there. And I like this uh, design it has with the tiles. But um, the sand green and black color scheme works pretty well too. And this over here is kind of steps up towards the temple area. But before we get on to, you know, the big highlight of the set, um, and actually I'm just going to point out that uh, it is kind of a little bit of a pain because when you move this around you might end up with the roof at uh, you know a different angle but as long as you make sure to fix it up every time you move it it should be you know good to go and it looks nice also there is that piece in there which is the uh, sand green version of that like elves decorative rallying piece so just neat part usage in there and it isn't very visible which is kind of a shame but we'll let it slide all right so here is the blacksmith shop and like the uh the marketplace um, build. It's the same size on a 16 by 16 base plate with one of these <clears throat> corner uh, blue wedge plates attached in front to represent water for the uh, for the uh, bridge. And similar detailing there. Got some plants and everything. Um, we got Claire and Kai, you know, standing out there. We can remove them. This is where it would attach to the temple. You can see we got some foliage on the side. Um, nice bigger tree. You, I like how they did the leaves with these star-shaped plates. But um, also the uh, smaller little plant. And another tree on the other side. Uh, in the back you can see uh, the interior, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, but I like what they did for the sides with the little architectural detailing. I like how they did the sideways window build. Um, got the flag here, which is stickered on both sides. And then this sticker on the door makes the door look a little cooler. And I just like the overall, you know, style of this build with... Whoa. Electrical surge. <laughs> but, um, I like the overall style with the sand blue and the, uh... uh the nice brown uh, wooden post builds. Uh, moving to the second floor, you can see we got a really interesting roof build. They don't do this very often where they have this protruding from a plate built kind of roof tile structure. Um, this whole second floor pops off though, so we can take a look at the interior really quickly. And move the camera down you can see inside it's a little blacksmith shop and it's got this nice sideways built uh, furnace I like that quite a bit nice table in the back with this little lamp which is built with a harpoon gun which is cool um, and just a little kinda table or counter on the wall with a cup some tools in a bucket or in a um, crate and a bucket and a nice build for the anvil in the center so putting this back on, you can see that unlike the other building, this one gets a second floor. And in here we have this little um, uh, kind of glider. Ooh, glider. And um, this we'll take a look at in a moment, but uh, you can see the bottom is very dark when you take that out. But other than that, the top floor is just empty space. I like the chimney build. They do that well. And I like this top roof section. I think the architectural style of this building is a lot more... Like the exterior is a lot better looking than the other one, but I think I like the interior of the other one a little bit better. So, let's uh, check out that little glider real quick. So this glider is really simple. Um, basically consists of a portion of wall with two spears and then these nice wing pieces on the sides. I actually needed some of these because um, I wanted to try and build something, a little set to review. I got a little free build that uh, I never got, but I wanted to put it together. But it does have the handles on the front, so you can clip a figure on like that, and it works pretty well, and it kind of is reminiscent of the old classic ninja theme gliders. So that's kind of why they included this, but it is nice that you can just fold the wings up and slip it right back in here, and that kind of hides it away. The only thing that shows out is those little handles. Alright, so here is the temple in its entirety. Um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to show the entire thing, but uh, that is your, you know, overall view. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on the individual sections, kind of floor by floor, we'll go with. 
So we're going to start out front here. We have this really nice fountain. And it's got a statue of Sensei Yang. Uh, I like this um, kind of gold decorative wheelish piece. Um, not exactly sure how this would work. I'm assuming this is supposed to be a platform, so maybe it should have been a little bit bigger. Um, if they wanted to do that just for the stairs to make sense. But I think it works decently enough. And I think it looks cool, most importantly. Um, the stairs on the sides are done, you know, the same. Uh, or mirrored, I guess I should say. Um, we do have some signposts with some Japanese writing, or Chinese writing, I'm assuming Japanese though. And each one is different, but they are all stickered. So, that's... I mean, mixed opinions on, on that. Uh, if we remove them, we can move up to the second floor. And we'll take a look at the interior afterwards. You can see we have sliding doors here. So you can move that back and forth. And I like the printed windows and doors that they use throughout the temple. And these posts hold up the roof, except not really. Because the roof is really just attached with a Technic pin. And they use a similar, um, like roof build for each level, except it gets a little smaller. And I like how they do this with the um, plates sticking out and that to give a nice little red point to each one. The top two floors look very similar from the outside, just, you know, getting a little smaller. And the very roof looks pretty cool. I like the point going up there with the silver ball. And I think that all of that just looks really nice all from the outside. So here on the inside of the Erjitsu Temple. You can see uh, the first floor. We're gonna skip like below ground for now because we'll come back to that because that is pretty cool. But um, in this first layer you can see we have a nice floor pattern and it's for the most part empty. We just have this little tea serving tray. So it has a little teapot in medium azure which only is available in this set and the um, Master Blue Dragon, as well as this little um, cup or pot, which has some probably tea leaves or a little plant in there. Uh, it's not supposed to be attached, it's supposed to be like that, so I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be. Um, second floor has a little training room, and there is a stickered wood pattern on that floor, uh, as well as a nice little training dummy, and uh, you know, you can sneak a ninja outside on the windows if you wanted to. But um, that just shows that you can see light through them, so you might want to make sure that it's not completely dark. Uh, over here there's a little table, and over there there's a little table, as well as swords on the stand there, um, silver and gold, as well as a bow, which I like that a lot, and then a beat up training dummy, which I like that sticker on the middle. And you're going to get a slightly shakier camera on the third floor because my tripod's not big enough. But um, in here, we have a little art area, or a little easel for Misako. Uh, a little cup over there with a paintbrush that is the same one as the painter had. I like this chair, which is very simply done with an inverted tile and these four corner panels. I like the sticker that they use there, as well as the use of the artist palette. In there, there are three books. Um, one of them has a leaf in it, um, and then one of them is empty, and then this one, I guess not, uh, I'm thinking of a different set. This one has a letter print, which is nice, and they get one gold book, and this one here has one of the um, Ultra Agents chip pieces. The other one is empty, so, you know, but I do like the little display that they have for the books, uh, the little bookcase. I think that it looks good, and I like the way that they did that right there. Um, that right there, you know, that's what I was talking about. That was a small error. But there's the back of it, uh, from or the back of the roof. And up here, all we have is this little box that says coal stuff. Moving down to the ground, we can see. Uh, inside it, it's difficult to get into because it has all of these, but there's just a camera and a hairbrush because, you know, Cole has got to keep his hair looking nice. But um, that is the interior of the Erjitsu Temple. And other thing I did want to point out is that there are little um, balconies all the way around. Before we get to the best part, we'll take a look at the figures 
And up first are Kai and Jay in their deep stone armor. I'm not going to bother taking off the uh, armor for the back because they are just the standard. But um, you can see that's the torso and leg detail on the front. And they do have their uh, you know default faces. If you'd like to see these figures in more detail, you can check out my minifigure showcase or you can check out a review of another possession set that has one of these guys because these guys are particularly common so um, I just don't wanna you know make this video like 20 years long by going into detail on the ninjas outfits and same deal with Cole and Jay here they're pretty standard Cole appeared in quite a few sets Zane was actually kind of harder to get um, he does have this nice face and you can turn it around but uh, you know same deal. It is just the standard. He only appeared in the Titan Mech Battle though, so I guess it is nice to get him in here. However, uh, this set is a whole lot more expensive than that one, so... And Lloyd and Nia here are, um, you know, both a lot less common than the others. Nia has her ninja suit for the first time. It's a nice uh, dark red and medium azure, and she does have this face, which actually, you know, is kind of interesting to point out. That is the now standard-ish Nia face for when she's a ninja, or in a ninja outfit. Um, she does have, you know, printing on the back, but not going to show that. And I'll do a minifigure showcase for both of these at some point. I think I might have done one for at least one of them. But, um, you could also check out my Final Flood of Destiny's Bounty review. I'll probably go into more detail there. But that is um, still yet to be done. And there is Lloyd's face. And I like the deep stone masks quite a bit. But now we can move into the figures that are not um, as common as these. They did only appear in Final Flight. So you had to spend either $120 or $200. So this is not the most, uh, you know, the, or the easiest to obtain. So before we get to the exclusive parts and prints, these two figures, Jesper or Jesper and Claire, are exclusive characters to this set and the Ninjago theme in general, but um, they use parts from other themes. This face, uh, I think, is a city face, but that torso there on uh, Jesper is from Kebab Bob, and I will go ahead and try to remove his... Uh, uh, scarfs so that you can see that, but um, it's got ketchup and mustard on it, which uh, interesting. And there's the back print, pretty simple, but um, cool, I guess, to get. He is kind of like the shopkeeper. They actually talk about his character in the instruction manual, um, so you guys can look that up if you'd like. And there's some mustard on his apron, but um, and he also does get this kind of less common color for that hat. But uh, Claire here is supposed to be his daughter, and she has a nice torso. I'm not sure where I've seen it before, but I'm pretty sure that I have. And there's the back print. And she has this standard, you know, kind of female city face. And she just has sand blue unprinted legs. But um, these guys aren't really exclusive, but it's nice to get, you know, some civilians in the Ninjago theme. And there are four figures left, and they are the real, actual good ones. Before we get to the uh, next two um, figures, I'd like to give a special mention to the Sensei Yang statue. He's a gray monochrome figure with a silver rice hat, so... Yeah. Alright, so these two... Um, Misako is an exclusive character. Wu is an exclusive, uh, you know, outfit. And if we take off his beard, you can see there is some nice torso print there, and his head's rolling away. But um, this outfit was used quite frequently in possession, so it's nice to get it as an actual suit. I thought this was what they were going to put in the Secret World of the Ninja book, but they didn't. I think that one might be this one without this outer robe, though, because that kind of looks similar on the underside. I'm not sure that's kind of just, you know, random thought. But Misako's torso is also pretty nice, and if we turn that around, you can see Sensei has a really nice print on the back of that torso, and hers is alright. And you can see double sided face. The only difference, though, is the eyebrows, really, so nothing too special. And I think this hair might be exclusive in this color, but I cannot confirm that. Sensei has the standard, uh, 
you know, blue face and beard. And he doesn't actually come with a staff in the set, so that's a little bit odd, kind of. But um, he does have a golden rice hat, and I think overall this version of Wu looks really good. Uh, only complaint is no side printing or dual molding on the legs, and it would have been really nice to get the pockets from Isako or a little um, bag to go over her shoulder. Those would have been nice inclusions, but I don't think that it really... Um, hurts Misako too much. I do think that it does kind of detract from the figure that Sensei Wu doesn't have printing on the side of his legs. But, um, two figures left. Uh, one of the two figures is Dareth, and he is just a new outfit from the last one, but the other one is the Postman. And when this set was announced, uh, this first thing that I thought, you know, looking at the figures was, wow, finally Misako. But then the other thing I saw was the Postman, and I was really happy whoops, to see him, because he is a, a comic relief character, basically, in the show. But um, he's really cool. Dareth, nice torso, updated from the last one, I like that, but I don't think the face is nearly as good as the last one. He does have the same hair color, so that's good. And back torso print, which does look good. Um, I think that his outfit is nice in this one. Uh, the back of the postman's torso is printed, and so is the front. He does have this bag here, which um, you can see there's just buttons in the middle. I'm not going to take it off. And his face is also really nice. I think that they did a good job with uh, that figure. So let's move back into the build for that last hidden feature that I didn't tell you about earlier. So last but not least is the underground area. And you may have noticed this on the side briefly in the other thing, or in the other angles. And uh, there is a little crank here, but it doesn't do any uh, anything obvious. But down here we got this little, uh, you know, this little screen, which is an exclusive part. It's kind of like a plasticky material. I'm not going to take it out because I have to put it back in without removing the temple part, which can be done. Like you can pull this plate up, but it it's not intentional. Like it it's difficult to do. But if we hold this in and push that you can see we get a little shadow show or whatever um, keep that held in and zoom in just a little you can see in there it uses micro figures and flames as well as a little snake on the other side in order to um, yeah, let's turn that off and get rid of the glare in order to create a really nice looking image there and I think that that looks really good. There's a light brick in there. That's obviously what's turning it on. But um, I, I just think that this is a really, really nice feature. And one of the better features that I have seen in um, ooh, whoops in uh, Ninjago sets of late. Especially unexpected in you know a big adult uh, targeted set like this one. But... I think that it is very welcome, very nice use of this space underneath here, and I, you know, really appreciate its inclusion. So, let's uh, get everything assembled back together and move on to the final verdict. So, just to wrap this uh, review up, we're going to go from the shadow theater there, and we are going to put the entire thing back together. We just take this and snap it into place. And then we take the uh, other building and put it over here. And just line it up, and there we go. And now all you have to do to finish this up is put the bridge in place. And then, once you've done that, you have a really nice looking uh, scene. I guess you can throw that in. But you have a really nice looking Ninjago town scene. And this is the closest thing we've gotten to anything Ninjago City related at all. So I think that in that aspect, it's a really nice build. I think it is a really nice thing to have for any Ninjago collector in particular. I think if you add to this with all of the other Ninjago temples that they've done, um, particularly Battle for Ninjago City, the Fire Temple, uh, Lighthouse Siege, even though that makes a little bit less sense, but uh, I think that, you know, you can make this look um, pretty cool. I think that it would have been really nice if this area was filled in with medium azure plates. I think that's my biggest complaint. 
because um, it also doesn't make too much sense. Um, like the layout is a little bit confusing, but I think that the buildings themselves are really well done and a really nice, um, you know, scene to have. I also think that the figures are well done, and I think that it is pretty good value at two hundred dollars. You know, approximately ten cents per piece, but I think overall it just looks really good. And especially when comparing this to the Disney Castle, they actually are kind of similar in, um, like, size. Um, the Disney Castle is about probably this much taller. It has, like, a hand probably above this. And I think that in other dimensions it's the same, it's just a lot fuller. But um, it's $150 more, and about twice as many parts, so that kind of makes sense. However, I think they're both equally good as display pieces, and this one, I think, wins in, you know, the playability aspect, because that Shadow Theater is the greatest play feature I've ever seen, and it was really fun to build as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you guys think, um, if you guys have this set, or if you enjoyed this review, um, just let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to know what everyone out there thinks about it, and let me know, um, what you guys think is the best Ninjago set, and also if you guys were excited to see the Postman minifigure because he's the best. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time with another review. Hopefully, going to be getting out some more big sets uh, like this reviewed. Uh, Disney Castle has not been done yet, specifically because of the height aspect. It kind of doesn't fit within my filming space. This one was kind of a stretch. But I think it works if you look at it. You know, it works well enough. Fits it all in there. Let me know if you guys thought that that was uh, an issue as well. Or if you thought that my uh, height and setup was fine. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Stay tuned for more content like this. Bye, everyone.